Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach as a place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Poor Charles 411 on February 27th. Happy birthday, Amanda. Yay. Happy 40th birthday to me. Happy 40 to you. Your birthday present is? Oh, my birthday present was awesome. A conversation with Real Andrews, a.k.a. Taggart. Marcus Tagger. He was so nice. I could have talked to him all day. Yes. So we had the extreme pleasure to speak with Riel and there is going to be two parts to it because <laughs> during the first part, he was stuck at the DMV. So just so everyone knows, the DMV does not cater to actors apparently because he was waiting in line yep. just like we all do. But so well, kind and didn't that. cancel for us. I have to renew my driver's license. You better get on that. reminded me of that. But you know, he, he didn't cancel on us went ahead and honored his commitment. So yeah, he was awesome. It was great. So we hope that you enjoy our chat. Um, so just thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us. Of course, it's my pleasure. We do a general hospital fan podcast and <laughs> I was really excited <laughs> when you came back. Oh <laughs> no. I was starstruck by you. She's she was talking weeks and weeks before they even announced that you were coming back, that you should come back. So we were very happy to that you're back on the show. Well, thank you. I'm very grateful to be back. And I, uh, you know, I'm grateful for you all. I, I like to call you, I don't like the F word. And I'm not talking about the four level, four level <laughs> word. I'm talking about the three level. Is it? No, it actually is a four level word. No, but I like to call them GH champions because, uh, but I'm very grateful for my GH champions and the support that I get from you all. So yeah, I was really surprised to not surprised, but happy to see how many people were as excited. You know, I didn't see any negative. Everyone's like, Oh my gosh, Taggart's back, you know, and we don't do spoilers at all. And she texts me the day before and she's like, I just have to do this. And she told me, so it was well, really, you know, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I, the same, man, I am just humbled. I, you know, as you know, it's been 17 years. You know, I don't remember Taggart being that popular. And yeah, I just was overwhelmed, uh, extremely humbled and grateful for the response that I got and the response I'm getting. And like yesterday when it came out that I had a daughter, it's like, oh my gosh, they're flipping out. <laughs> well, amazing. So we do two episodes a week. On Mondays, we do a recap of the previous week's shows and basically like our opinions and just our talking about it. And then on Thursdays, we do the Port Charles 411, which is more of an information session about different topics. And when you came back, we did one about your character. And a couple of weeks before that, I think it was in November, we had an entire conversation about who should Trina's family be. And you were mentioned, we originally thought the Ward family, but then someone on Twitter did say, or it could be Taggart's, or she could be Gia's. And I'm like, no, it can't be Gia's because then we're, I mean, we change story or timelines all the time anyway. But yeah, so it's really, we want to know her, who, who her mom is, but they haven't said yet. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you ain't going to get that out of me. So but, uh, <laughs> I know we don't want it, though, honestly, like we don't because we like to be surprised. Right. Yeah. And you know what? I love, love, love. And that just goes to show you the uh, amazing writing team and, and producing team that we have. It's, a, it's so many people were just like, what? Yeah. Didn't see that coming. And it yeah. was like, it's, yeah, there's a lot of stuff they ain't going to see coming. Let me just tell you that. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, <laughs> yay. Well, it's been a really exciting couple of weeks, you know, but it feels like it did back in the 90s. Yep. That mm. writing's on point again. I, I said, you know what? I said, uh, I actually responded, you know, because I, re I, I respond to all my champions. Um, I try to do it as fast as can. But there was a tweet that came out this morning. It's one of the best I ever got. I responded. I said, so the lady said uh, she has a friend who's blind. And I wish I could remember it better. But she had a friend who was blind. So she was trying. She was describing me to, uh, to her. And she said something like, he's a cross between a Denzel Washington smooth chocolate and, and some other. <laughs> and I was like, damn. I said, okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. 
that's a good discussion. She did a good job. <laughs> okay. Hey, one second, champ. So I just want to see where we are. Sure, sure. Oh, we're good. We're way good. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry right. that you're still waiting, but... <laughs> no, it's all good. So do you actually watch the show? Because I actually listened to the interview you did with Stephen Bradford, and you said that you had been a fan of General Hospital. Did you watch it while you were off? Um, you know what? Uh, keeping it real, I was a massive fan prior to getting on the show. So I watch it religiously like most of you did. Um, I'm, I'm very much, you know, I just keep it real. If you follow me, you know, that's how I roll. I'm very much a team player. So when I wasn't on the show anymore, I, I wasn't watching, you know, because I was on different networks for different shows. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm like, I'm like the biggest that when I'm on that network, every TV, every whatever's on the house is on. And part of it also was, you know, if you follow me, you know, um, the last 17 years of my life have been challenging by decisions of my own and with, you know, alcoholism and drug addict and, and all that kind of stuff. And so a lot of it was denial. I was angry at the wrong people, you know, now realizing now that I'm walking a different walk in my life and being sober, that the only person I had to blame was myself right here. So extremely grateful. So part of me was like mad at, well, they don't have me on the show anymore, so I'm not going to watch it, you know, or the network or whatever. But I was the only person that I needed to be mad at. And so when I got the second chance, so I like to say I was extremely grateful. And then I automatically really got caught up with everything because I wanted to know what everybody was doing. Of course, I stay in touch with Maurice. He's like my BFF. So, um, but that's the best honest answer I can give you that way. Yeah. No, that's, that's great. And you had mentioned before that you weren't, sh you didn't realize how big of a character you were to people back in the 90s. And I think that a lot of it was because you and Maurice just had a, an amazing chemistry, you know, and, you know, we were always scared that you were actually gonna take him down, you know? <laughs> so, so you've done other things, obviously, besides General Hospital. What has been the favorite thing that you've done? I've seen that you've been, you know, working on stunts for different movies and then, you know, like life coach type of stuff. What is your, what's most fulfilling to you? You know, uh, well, that's a loaded question there, man. What's most <laughs> fulfilling, well, if you ask me what's most fulfilling for me, is helping everybody believe that they are, you know, who they're most created to be and bringing out the champion in everybody. That's what I'm most passionate about. It's just, you know, that's why I say I'll believe in you if you believe in yourself. Um, but if you ask me what's my favorite thing to do in, in acting, what's my favorite experience, um, I would have to say... You know, well, GH goes without saying, but Lonesome Dove, I did an episode of Lonesome Dove, the series. That was, that was, that was an actor's dream. You know, you just like, it's a period piece. You get to, by the time you've gone through makeup and hair and, and props and everything, you like, you've become that character and you're like got the drawl and you're walking different. And that to me was a blast. And also the Highlander was another period piece. That was awesome. Um, and then uh, Soldiers of Fortune was was really, really cool there as well. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. Honestly, for me, you know, everybody's different, right? But for me, because family is extremely important to me. Um, and I've done it all. Features, episodical, uh, sitcoms. To me, soap opera and obviously because GH is the best one, in my yeah. opinion. That's We're a little biased, opinion. too. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the best gig in town, you know, because as an actor, it's like a, a, a glorified nine-to-five job. You go into the same place every day. You get to sleep in your own bed at night. You know, those other gigs, you know, those are 16, 17-hour days, six days a week, going from location to location. And, you know, as much as I love acting, I'll do what God asked me to do. I'm not going to question him. But if I had a choice, which it isn't my choice, it's God's <laughs> choice, in my opinion, I would pick what, what I'm doing right now all day, 24-7, 360. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. One second. I'm just going to double check. Hold on. Nope, that's okay. We're there. G130. I'm G135. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so you still have like five hours. <laughs> well, probably. Did you name your son Marcus after your character? You know, that's a great question. I believe the, the name, we thought they named Marcus Taggart after our son because 
they never ever mentioned Marcus Taggart. You only ever heard Taggart mm -hmm. until after my son was born. Really? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. If I remember, if so I remember sweet. that. Yeah. If I, I think that's pretty much how it went down. Yeah. That's really that's sweet. sweet. That's really cute. We love how they tie in. Like Baby Donna is named after the woman who worked on GH for all those years. You know, and she passed yes. away last year. Yeah. You know, oh, what an, mm. yeah, Tie all that stuff in. So Amanda kind of asked one of my questions. Um, so how, Damn how it, Amanda. You, uh, sorry, no, because questions. she said she was yelling at me before we started, because she has like 10 pages here. And I was oh, like, no, I'm just kind of going to wing it. We'll see where we end up. So yeah. I don't yell. But <laughs> back to the business coaching and, you know, that you do the transformational coaching. How did you even get into that? Um, you know, that's a great question. I, um, it, it happened. Um, I used to be deathly scared of death before I became a believer. And so I never ever went to a funeral. I couldn't sleep on my back. I couldn't put a sheet over my head. I couldn't walk on the same side of the street as a funeral home. I certainly wasn't going in a graveyard, any of that. And uh, it was in my thirties. I had a girlfriend at the time and her grandfather died. He was 87 years old. And she asked me if I'd go to the funeral with her. And I said, you know, it's time I better put my big boy panties on and start facing these fears. and. Uh, so I said I'd go, but the only funeral I'd ever been to was something I'd seen on TV, you know, and there are always like a lot of people there and everybody saying nice things and people crying and laughing and all that. So I thought that's what it was going to be like. So I get to this funeral and we're at the gravesite and there's me, my girlfriend, the mom, the husband and her sister. And that's it. And time literally stopped for me. And literally, I remember being on the top of that hill at the graveyard. I could hear the the, the rabbi speaking and but the, it just started like spinning like this just like and I and it was at that moment I had two huge aha moments one it was like I never want to walk this earth 87 years and have such a little impact that nobody comes to my funeral and it wasn't about people being cool it was about making a difference leaving a legacy and the other thing was at the same time I realized people just walk around here thinking they're not important. They're just here. They're just taking up space. Unless they're like a big CEO or a president or a famous actor, they think they're not important. If they think, you know, they're working at Jack in a Box or washing windows. And, and I think that's absolutely, completely, one million percent wrong. I think everybody, doesn't matter what you do. I've washed windows. I've dripped, dripped pizza. You know, whatever I did, I've always did it with excellence. When I was delivering pizzas, I want to be the best delivery boy. When I was washing windows, I wanted to be the best person to wash windows because that was my calling at that time. That was what I was supposed to be. That was the void I was supposed to be filling. And so I truly believe that every person has a calling and it, it makes me extremely sad. I get sad even talking about it to think that anybody would go through their whole life just thinking they weren't important. So... I just believe that that's my calling to help people to know that they are important. That's all. Sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah. Sorry. So I'm just a little passionate about that, you might say. They say that your why should make you cry. And obviously, you know, I mean, it's definitely very moving, you know, and I think that you come from a great place because we both agree, you know, we both have kids and two of them or my son and her daughter are starting to look to what are they going to do after school, you know, mm. and gone are the days where you push college and that's the only answer, you know, it's, they can't just sit on our couch and not do anything, but it, there's pride in being a mechanic, you know, there's every job has purpose, you know, it's not just, do I get the corner office, you know, and do I have my name on a big billboard, you know, it's. Amen. I agree. Well said. Hold on. <laughs> G131. Okay, let's go. Oh my gosh. That's the same hey, if, we, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we got to redo, uh, you know, come back and finish this, we will, okay? Okay. <laughs> of course, they, they never ever go fast, but because no, we're no. doing an interview, they're going fast. That's exactly <laughs> right. Um, and then we're both just huge mental health advocates also. And so we just really appreciate how much, you know, you you and Maurice, you know, are so open about it. Do you think that they'll bring that into Taggart's character as well, how they have with Maurice? You never know. The writers are amazing. And, you know, here's the thing with me. 
as an actor. My, the title under my name is actor. It's my job to bring to life the characters the best to my ability and make those lines come to life that the writers, my, my name does not have writer under it. My name does not have wardrobe person under it. My name does not have makeup artist. So I'm not, I honestly, I, cause I know I'm just not one of those guys who's like wardrobe people ask me, what do you think? I'm like, what do you think? You're the one who's going to win the award. They're like, well, what do you, I'm like, Hey, I got faith in you, man. Whatever you, you think my character should be doing and playing. But what I do know about the GH writers and, they're very, very good. They're very, very smart. Um, they're very, very great at, they, I believe they do research on us because of the way they write us. You mm -hmm. know, GH is, you know, people say, how do you do a hundred pages a day, dude? I work really hard at it, but when I'm on GH, it's not that hard because it's just the words that I say just seem to be natural and that's great writing. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Oh, someone's yeah. not happy. <laughs> yeah, he's not happy. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but you're right. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, I it's great they, how they, they bring, you know, some of that stuff into you guys. But it's just nice to see, you know, there is a big shift going in mental health right now that, you know, it's more awareness and acceptance, not yeah. other things. So yeah. it's very nice to have. It, take, it takes people like me and Maurice and others. It's like, you know, it's very much shamed, as you know, but now it's becoming a little more accepted, a little more accepted. But, you know, because even for me and Maurice to come out like we do, you know, it's great for a lot of people, but there's still people out there that think of you different and judge you different and, and stuff like that. So it is what it is. I don't care. If I change one life, I'm okay with that. Exactly. That's My daughter's autistic, and so I deal a lot with people having opinions about that. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, you know, stopping the stigma and everything like that, and then you you're awesome with everything no. that you do. She's a, a huge advocate, and it's amazing. And my oldest daughter is bipolar, so it's a oh, struggle. Oh wow, we got we got a lot. No, you got to go the other way. We got a lot in common. Hold on one sec, champion. Okay. Right. Are we on G? Oh, you know what, champions? They're on G one thirty four. Okay. So let's pause and uh, continue this interview. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Thank All right, you. Champions. Thank you. God bless. You too. Amanda, guess what time it is? What time is it? It's time for me to pick out my Fat Fit Fun selections. Oh my gosh, you were so excited with the last box. What are you going to get this time? I love Fat Fit Fun. Seriously, I've been using it for over a year. And at first, I was like, do I really want to, you know, spend money on that? Yes. I know it, how you get you are. over $200 worth of products for only $49.99 and it's once a quarter. That's not bad at all. No, not at all. One of the items that I'm getting in my spring box is a light therapy, anti-wrinkle light. Ooh, that yeah. I've seen them listed other places for well over $100 and that's, that's going to awesome. be included in my box. They also have robes, different lotions, sprays. There's a really cute umbrella on there. Tons of things for you to pick out. You're making me want one. You could go to our website, pure54podcast.com and just go under the savings tab and click the get offer button under the FabFitFun. Make sure to use promo code rainbow and you get $10 off your first box. That's a deal. It's amazing. So go check out our website, pure54podcast.com and make sure to use promo code rainbow for $10 off your first box. And you're going to love it. Take two. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. What's why is Maurice and Steve looking at me? What the? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, so I'm back. Thanks for that being here. That is really cool that you can do that. Yeah. We need to speak. Is that because I saw on your website that you have like a ninja video thing? Is that similar to the ninja selling program? No, no. It's uh, I was, uh, I did a ninja video course teaching people how to do videos, the right? Because, you know, people do some scary stuff with the video so i taught them all this kind of stuff and just the right way to um there's some simple things that they can do just to make their facebook lives or even their their, their videos they do like one of the the big things is is the uh, level that they have their their phone on or i may even shoot it like this anyways but you know most people they for whatever reason they talk down to their phone like that and it comes across like you're talking down to somebody nobody likes to be talked down mm -hmm. to so you, are, you always want to have your lens, which is your the camera, mm -hmm. at, your, at your eye level. You don't want to have, I know they love to do this for pictures, but for video, that's not good. 
but you so you want to have it right and the other big thing is it seems simple but know where your camera is <laughs> most, yes. people don't, most people don't know where their camera is and they're just like you know because then you want to because and then once you get used to knowing where your camera is because it, it's really hard to not keep looking at yourself and then, you know, for me, your eye lines off because you want it to be like, see, right now, if I, right now I'm talking to the lens. So to you, it looks like I'm talking to you. But if I start watching myself, you see the difference? Just yeah. Watching myself, it's a huge difference. And for somebody like yourself and a lot of people out there now, a lot of people have podcasts, they have Facebook lives, they have, you know, stuff that they do. And this, this, this makes a massive difference. It's stuff that uh, if you didn't know about you wouldn't know about but it makes a big difference when you're trying to promote stuff sell stuff or whatever yeah. and then lighting sound uh, clean your lens the the blurry lens effect is not yes. cool <laughs> i'm in real estate so i have like a cloth in my at all times because you just never know when you're going to have to take a picture and yes that's awesome all right so i'm yours let's go awesome where did we leave off um we were just talking about our kids and the fact that your daughter is autistic and my daughter is bipolar. Oh yeah, because you didn't get di like you didn't get diagnosed until later in life, right? Me, yeah. You know, um, Maury's diagnosed me in about three days of knowing him, twenty-seven years ago. Uh, my wife, uh, you know, because that's what she does. Uh, that's one of her gifts. Is uh, she was a um, psychiatrist. Uh, she mm -hmm. trained as that in family child care and stuff like that. So she uh, you know diagnosed me and of course that doesn't go over well when it's your significant other diagnosing you and so i, I didn't receive you know maurice was whatever um my wife i didn't really receive that um you know for the beginning part of our relationship she was always you know because i was a mess i was a real mess back then you know i had all that going on which i didn't know about then i'm self-medicating with with drugs and kind of stuff, what people do to just, you know, so I was a mess. But I didn't see that, of course. I thought everybody else was a mess, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my wife was called, you need to get on medication, you need to get a medication. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. You know, we had a lot of fights about that. And uh, the main thing for me wasn't, it was because I watched my mom have a cupboard full of medications like literally take her 20 minutes at night time to take them all out and i just was not um it was not even an idea for me that that was something i was going to be i was not going to be you know having to take medication for the rest of my life it just was i was not down with that and um so i fought it for a long time um and like you said it wasn't until recently and it, it came out of me first and foremost getting sober and then about six months into my sobriety I um I started to spiral into a really really dark depression like and usually I've always been you know for the past my whole life you know I've always I've gone down into these holes but I've always been able to get myself out I always had these tools you know, and things that I could always get out. Sometimes it'd take a week, sometimes it'd take three, four months, whatever, but I always got out. But this was, A, it was going farther than I've ever gone. Um, just really dark, really having, you know, really ugly, black, dark thoughts to the point where I almost like, that was it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I could none of my tricks were working. I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. You know, and then when I was driving to an AA meeting, it hit me. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm sober. I can't hide behind anything anymore. I can't go drink. I can't go, you know, do whatever else I would do. And so it's right smack in my face, you know. And I remember me and my wife were sitting down here at Vons and, you know, we were having that call. I had the doctor's appointment made for the next day, but I was still to the last minute trying to, to not do it. And, um, you know, two things, she looked at me and she said, you know, it's not easy being your wife. And it's not easy for the kids. And I guess the way I looked at her, she goes, are you surprised to hear that? And I was like, yeah, because I thought I did a pretty good job of hiding it or dealing with it. 
And obviously I hadn't. And um, she said, what if? What if this could help you to be, you know, normal and not have to do this up and down and stuff like that? So I went to the doctor and I still, even after I got officially diagnosed as bipolar, due to medic depressant and uh, got put on medication, I still kind of fought to the last minute of taking the medication, but um, the best thing I ever did. It's a journey, you know, I like to say I'm under construction. Um, stole that from my friend in the program and you know every day is a new day but so far it's been amazing mm -hmm. um, getting a lot of my life back um, well no I shouldn't you don't get it back but I'm starting to enjoy there's a lot of work to be done as you can imagine there's a lot of damage with my family and my kids. Um, but at least I have an opportunity to fix it and to live a normal life. And, you know, along with a company that I partnered with, Amari, which is the number one mental health wellness company and stuff that we do with that. It's so it's, it's, it's inspiring, but yeah, I wish I would have, uh, you know, I, I talked with m one of my sons is, you know, probably even, it's funny because having a conversation with my wife the other day, and here I am again being in denial for my son, I guess. But, you know, I, uh, I had a conversation with him the other day and I was just like, the great thing is that you recognize it and you're willing to see if it's an issue and take care of it. I wish I would have known it at your age and not have to have not, not so much me, you know, because I, I can deal with, but it's the people that I've put through hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tough, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's awful. It's awful going through it as a parent, and I can imagine mm -hmm. it's awful going through it yourself, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you guys, I meant to ask you, it's freaking me out having Steve and Maurice in the background. <laughs> uh, it's, so I was going to, because you don't look, I thought you guys were like in high school. You don't look like school. <laughs> we like, have high schoolers. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're married. You got kids. How young are you? <laughs> I will be 40 next week. Shut up. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were not even, I thought you were a teenager. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. How old are you? 37. Oh my gosh. You guys are killing me. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, thank now, where, you very where, much. Yeah, where do you live? Pittsburgh. Wow. Pittsburgh Steelers. You ever been to the East Coast? Yeah. You guys are crazy. You guys going to the football game. And you all... <laughs> Actually, neither of us. Uh, we yeah. don't care. <laughs> yeah, we're not sports girls. <laughs> you had now, mentioned... now, if GH was at the stadium in 40 we below. Be there, be right. <laughs> <laughs> we went to one of Steve's shows on a Steeler game night. Oh, there you go. So, yeah, the whole city shuts down for it, but... We don't care. No. I used to work in a sports bar though, so kind of the same as when you got off GH and right. stopped watching. Once my tips and my money didn't matter anymore, <laughs> I was like, all right, I can do things on Sundays now. And That's I just never awkward. got back into it. So yeah. All right. Cool. So next. I'm taking a picture. <laughs> <laughs> um oh, so you talked a lot. So um do you read a lot? Do you listen to a lot of podcasts, like motivational or professional development, personal development? A ton. I don't read. Okay. okay? A, I'm blind as a bat. Um, so, and I, ref I, 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 it would be an easy concept just to put the glasses on so I could see, <laughs> but that, that would be too easy. Um, but no, I, 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 I'm not able to see that well. And B, I'm really not a big fan of read. I don't have the patience. So, but I do listen to a ton of audiobooks and um, podcasts. Like basically my morning routine is, um, you know, I get, I get up about 3.30 every morning. Just, I don't use an alarm clock. I just wake up. Um, it's amazing how many times I wake up exactly at 3.33. It's pretty crazy. Um, I like to come down. I take all my supplements. Um, I like to make a hot drink that I have with some of my supplements. And I'll just sit there and have quiet time, what I call quiet time. 
can be 10, 20, 30 minutes, I don't know, um, hang out with me and Diamond. And then from there, what I'll do is I will, uh, you know, I'm usually on my way to the gym by then. I got my headphones in. I'm listening to worship music. I always start with worship music first. Mm -hmm. And from there, I will go to personal growth. Uh, I have a podcast I like to listen to. Uh, my favorite podcast is uh, The Quote of the Day Show. It's a great, okay. great, great podcast I listen to. And I like, I got a ton of books. I mean, like I listen to, I love to listen to books. And and then from there, I'll, I'll go to, you know, by then it's about time I'm finishing my workout. And then I switch to some of my um, more, you know, grindy music. I don't listen to any um, music with the N-words in. I don't listen to music with profanity. I don't listen to, uh, I like uh, house music. I like techno. But once again, with none of the things, I like reggae. I like classical um, you know, good old rock and roll, stuff like that. But uh, I'm a big fan of, you know, being very um, particular outside of that last bit of my work workout, which is a bit of fun time. But other than that, I'm not really listening to anything unless it's feeding my brain because um, I, I just, I, I have um, too damaging what these songs and things are doing to the kids these days and everybody else. So, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it's like these parents let these kids listen to this stuff and then they don't understand why their kids are acting the way they are. And it's subliminal implantation over and over and over and over and over again. Hitler understood the power of that. You right. know? Yeah. So, but yes. Okay. Um, what's your favorite audio book? <sighs> I have a whole bookshelf full. That's why I was like. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got a few. Um, one, one actually I just gave to Mark Teshner. I actually have pretty much hard copies. Uh, Can't Stop Me with David Goggins is another one. Um, that's one of my favorite ones. I love that. Uh, John Maxwell, 21 Laws of Leadership. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to, let me, because I guess I, I want to give you some good ones here. Hold on, because there's, I just got so many, I forget them. Right. Have you ever read Bob Goff or listened to it, um, Love Does, or Everybody Always? No, but I'm going to write that. I think down. that you would like them because they're also faith-based. What is it, Bob Goff? Bob Goff, G-O-F-F, -F, and yeah. the first book is Love Does. Okay. And the second book is Everybody Always. Everybody Always, okay, awesome. And he narrates his own books, so that's... I listen to a lot of audio in the car, but I there's certain people that I, I can't listen I know. to somebody else. <laughs> oh my god. I'm like, okay, that it might be great content, but I can't listen to you. So I know it's it's well I'll get to I'll I'll get come back to this answer and it's uploading my books. Okay. So but yes, I uh, you know, I'll I'll write that down. I'm thinking of um, you know, obviously I love Zig Ziglar stuff, but there's some really cool ones. Man, what was that one I read? Oh man, it was something. Oh, that was a good one recently. But uh, anyways, it'll come back to me. Okay. Uh, next. Oh, here they are. Here they are. Okay, they come. So here are some. Um, the Heart of Leadership, Home Run, All In, All, All okay. In. That's a great book. That's a great book. Um, David and Goliath, How Successful People Lead. Twenty Thousand Days and Counting is another one of my favorites. Oh, The Traveler's Gift. I love that. Yeah. Oh, Debate of Satan. That's the one I was thinking. You, okay. This this book here, Bait of Satan. Okay, this book. Oh no, 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 that's that's a good book. That's not the one I was talking about. Um, but that's a good no pill no okay, here it is. This is the one. The it's a Napoleon Hill book, Keys to Success, but there's another one. Think and Grow Rich. No, no, I have that one too, but it's it's not one that a lot of people know about. It's, um, man, I want to find that one for you. Kingdom Man is another great one of mine. I love that one. No Excuses, another Made to Stick. Um, Oversubscribe, I listen to a lot. But I want to find you this one book, because I want to tell you this story about this. Hold on. It's, an, it's a Napoleon Hill book, Proctor. Bob Proctor, of course, is huge. I do, uh, oh, The Way of the Seal, is a, that's another awesome book. How, um, man, Napoleon Hill, what is that book? Oh, I'm not going to spend all day, but I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you about the book and then I'll find you the name. Okay. So this book, 
this book, Napoleon, we all know about, you know, the, the Napoleon Think and Grow Rich and the other one. But this book was a book that Napoleon Hill wrote, I mean, like forever ago. And his family, because of the content of the book, they basically buried it. It's, it's basically a conversation. No, it's not a conversation. It's, it's him interviewing the devil. Maybe it's an interview with the devil or something. But because of the stuff that he talked about in that book and the stuff he says, they buried it because they, they just thought it would be. And so like all these years later, somebody found it and they produced it. I'm telling you, when you read this book and you realize when it was written, it will freak you out with what's going on in our world today. I and think I know what book you're talking about. I can't remember the title either, but somebody told me about it. Yeah, it is, it is, it is a trip. Like, and he's literally, I mean, you know, you'll be like, did he really interview the devil? <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing. That, but when you read it and, and you look where we are today and stuff that's going on, you, you're going to go, wow, it's crazy, that book. Yeah. Outwitting the Devil? Yes, that's it. Outwitting the Devil. Yeah, that's the one. Well, now I want to read it. It's, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't remember who talked about it, but it was another author mentioned it, you know, and it was, it sounded interesting. I actually forgot about it. So thank you. Yeah, because when you know, once again, you'll see when it was written, it's beyond its time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was written. Yeah. And they basically buried it because they were, when they, they were afraid it was going to bring harm on the family or whatever. Yeah, 1938. Wow. Yeah. 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 And it wasn't released until 2011. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, mm -hmm. that's insane. No, that sounds really good. So who's your favorite worship band? Oh, um, Kim. What's her name? Kim. You know who I mean? Um, Jesus loves me, Kim. What is her name? Marcus. <laughs> Kim. Oh, how he loves me. Who does that one? It's Jesus Culture, but it's Kim Walker Smith. Yes, thank you. Kim Walker Smith and Jesus. That one live version is, is unbelievable. And of course, I love, uh, what's her name? Tashiba, Tahiba or something who does Break, 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 uh, Break Every Chain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that I start every single when I start my worship music, the first song I play every single day is break every chain because uh, I want to that's, you know, every day we can break some chains. So and Hill song, of course, I love and also um, you quoted Mercy Me on your Instagram Mercy one me, time. Yeah, yeah, and I was Mercy like, me. I love that. It was I can only imagine. Yeah. yeah, Mercy Me, I can only imagine. Yeah. So those are some of my favorites. I got a lot. Those some of them. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's tough. And, and, and my church, Higher Vision Worship Team, check out their CDs. They okay. Got, they got some great CDs. Check them out. What do your kids think about the fact that you're an actor? Do they like to brag about it, or are they kind of embarrassed of you now? Um, I don't think they're embarrassed. You know, I think I think they won't say that. But you know, they go like, "Dad, my friends are out googling you, and they say your guys is that and stuff." So I I would hope they're proud. You know, my kid. You know because of the way they've been brought up, they're very humble, you know, I'm, I'm just a big advocate because I think probably, um, you know, for me, being an actor is a blessing. It's my job. It's my calling. I don't see myself. I've never seen myself as different of anybody. You know, I, I, I go to the bathroom the same, I eat the same. And, and they see that. So it's not like their dad isn't one of those guys who acts, you know, different, you know, like some may choose to. I'm not judging or nothing, but I'm just saying. So I think it's probably just normal for them okay. because, because I make it, keep it normal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but they do come home sometimes and say, dad. <laughs> 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 my friends Googled you and they were like everywhere. You know, my daughter, there's a picture of me and my daughter on the, the red carpet. And of course she likes Aww. that. Oh, that's adorable. Do any of them want to follow in your footsteps? Um, they did at one point, you know, my oldest son, Marcus, he's out of school now. And he's, he was the, he was the jock, you know, of the family, very athletic. Um, he's, you know, very bright, you know, and he's like looking into, he's actually looking into getting a job, um, behind the camera 
in the film industry right now. And so that's kind of where his vision on. Nathan, my middle son, is um, a genius beyond a genius. He's just like brilliant beyond. And so, you know, he wants to, he's, <laughs> I don't know, did you see that video I posted a while ago where Nathan was bouncing on the bed singing about money? Did you yes. see that? I do not. Well, that pretty, much, that pretty much says it right there. Already at that age, he was like, he just wants to make a lot of money, and he will. A little entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, you know, entrepreneur. And my daughter Danica, you know, she's the some cheerleading. She's playing soccer now, um, gymnastics. Um, just, you know, she's daddy's little girl. And she's amazing, and she's finding herself. You know, she both Nate. You know, they were all very talented. You know, when they were were younger and they wanted to were curious about it. They were all booking stuff and, and getting stuff. And, you know, Danica's naturally a great singer. Nathan's a great singer um, when he wants to, you know, Marcus has got, you know, the, the brooding good looks and, and stuff. So they all have their own gifts and talents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's great. I think Nathan's the most, if he wanted to be, he's like more the most of an actor like me, but it's not, you know, he just want to go to MIT and invent an app and make billions of dollars. Yeah. You want to be more behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. I am. I asked all my nerdy questions. I I know. I think we're good. And they weren't even nerdy. Dude, it's freaking me out. <laughs> oh, Steve comes right here. It's like there. <laughs> Do you have any favorite classic General Hospital storylines? Um. Oh yeah. Well, the my old time classics. Uh, one of the because I just it's so not me and. I was kind of happy with the way it came out and it's just kind of fun. But when they told me I was going to be in that nurse's ball and have to sing, <laughs> I, about, I about had a heart attack because that, <laughs> that is not my, I am not trying out for American Idol. Okay. That <laughs> dancing is not my thing. That's my wife's thing. And so the nurse's ball is one of my funnest things I've ever done. One of my, I mean, you know, anything with Maurice and Steve is just, that's a given. You know, uh, I loved the storyline back in the day because, you know, I think you'll agree back in the day, Taggart was pretty much one note. It's like, take Sonny down, read people their rights, that's it. But they gave me um, a, an interesting storyline for a minute when they brought in my mom um, and she was, you know, had cancer, I believe, and was in the hospital. And then I had a sister and stuff like that. But specifically that storyline with my mom, and then there was a, a storyline I did with Lucky as well, which was when we were, well, that was on my head. Now, fast forward to now, you know, it's, this right now is just, I'm in heaven. You know, I mean, you guys, it's just star, but, you know, Taggart is so many levels right now. He's uh -huh. not one level. He's intertwined in so many different things. There's so many twists and turns coming and, and it's awesome. You know, so right now it'd have to be what, what we got going on right now. Yeah. So, yeah. And now that we've established that you are Trina's dad, you know, it's like you you have stickiness, you know, you're not just, in our opinion, going to be gone in like a month or anything because Trina's been around. So dad has to, we've always wondered where her parents are. So <laughs> right? just, well, the, she just showed up. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did. Go ahead. That goes. Okay. <laughs> so when you came back, someone mentioned on, it was either it was on social media that back in the nineties, there was rumor that they were going to have your mom marry Mike. Did you know about that? Was that actually a thing? Oh, Mike as in, in, um, Mike Corbin, like in, Sonny's dad. Sonny's dad. dad, Sonny's dad. Um, you know what? I remember something about that. And there was also remember the back in the day. Now I can't remember if it was wishful fans creating this or if it was actual, but I remember there was a lot of talk about uh, Taggart and Sonny finding out that they were half brothers. I remember hearing that. I think, yeah. I think it was us. <laughs> Wish, right. Wishing, the, thinking. Fans, you guys created that. Yeah. But, but you didn't have right. You didn't have writer underneath your name, so it didn't happen. No, it didn't happen. <laughs> we do think we sometimes do. they listen to us, though. Yes. <laughs> but we like to think that because we throw out suggestions every now and again. But. No, because when someone said that, I'm like, that would have been so messed up. That would have been great, though, because, oh, you yeah. know. Well, Sonny would lose it then, wouldn't he? Yeah. You know, it's just, it's interesting because you guys both had different upbringings. And then, you know, that one pivotal moment shows which way you can go. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, yeah. that would have been awesome. Yeah. 
Did you have anything? I know. This was such a good interview. I know. Thank you for talking with us. Well, my yeah. pleasure. So, and you know, um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, because both of you guys with their issues of mental health, uh, I got to run. I'm going date night with my wife, but I, I definitely want to talk to you about some things I'm, I'm part yeah. of doing that, you know, I'm looking to lock arms with champions like yourself and where we can make a difference. Uh, I'd like to just say once again, thanks to everybody. I, I am so humbled by all your support. I appreciate it. If you could follow me at Rail Andrews on Instagram and Twitter. And, um, you know, if you like what I'm doing, you know who to reach out to at ABC and let them know. It doesn't hurt. So, um, and I appreciate you too. Amanda and Shannon for reaching out. This has actually been one of my favorite interviews as well. So if it wasn't, oh, I would thank come you. Back. I'm going to come back for part two if it wasn't. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And you know, I'm I'm just going to talk for both of us that I think that we would be honored to help with anything that oh, we yes. can. Great. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. You too. All right, bye. Bye. Have a fun date night. <laughs> thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. 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 Okay, that was awesome. It was so awesome. That was so, oh, he was so easy to talk to. Did I fangirl too hard? You didn't, but it was so <laughs> cute. You guys, I wish you could see Shannon's face when he first came on the screen and said, okay, so go ahead, start. I can't even remember what exact words he used. I don't he remember used, either. something like, shoot me the first question or whatever. She totally fangirled out and could not speak for a second. And it was the I cutest thing. I put my head thing. down. I'm like, hi. It was the cutest thing you've ever seen. It was adorable. I'm like, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I loved great. it. But I mean, it was, he's just so down to earth. And like you said at the beginning, you know, it's like, yeah, he has to deal with the DMV too. You know, he's peeking in, trying to see if his number's being called and, and yelling at his kids in the background to be yep. quiet for a minute because he's on the podcast. He's totally real life. Yep. I loved it. It was great. So what was your favorite part? Um, when he told us that we didn't look as old as we are, obviously. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> but real content wise, I like the fact that he actually knew what was going on in general hospital back in the day and that he was current with what's going on right. now. He was just excited about this week's news story of his life as we were. Yep. So we actually recorded this before, obviously today. So we haven't, we don't know what's happening on Monday. The <laughs> we should know our dates matter. On Monday, the 25th through the go. 26th. So if something happened, we don't know. Right. Or Friday, the 21st, because we recorded during the day. Right. And it's Friday, so we should have a good cliffhanger because it has been so we had such a great day being able to know that he's Trina's dad. And he really seemed to enjoy that storyline. He did. Also. Yes. Excited about it and where it's gonna take him. And he said a couple of times that we're gonna be blown away by all the new storylines that are coming out. So cannot wait. I'm so excited. Me too. But we hope that you enjoyed this conversation. Like you heard, it's not gonna be the last time we talk to him. So yeah, it was it was a lot of fun and it was definitely a really, really, really good time. So yeah. Have a good weekend. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up. Just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 